Tom Hanks goes to war again on this date. Welcome back to On This Date. Today's date is July 10th, 2023. It is the 191st day of the year. You got 174 days left in 2023. It's the 28th Monday in the 28th week and the 20th day of summer. You got 75 days left until fall. Today is National Pina Colada Day. The Pina Colada has a long, noble history, both as this made-up word, mixological standard. Yes, apparently mixologist is a thing now. I liked it better when they were bartenders. It's also at the heart of a song about not giving up on love just because you think it's gotten stale. Remember, if you like pina coladas and getting caught in the rain, great song from the 1970s. If you listen to the lyrics, the guy is in a relationship, and this is back before the internet, but he put an ad in a local newspaper for someone to date while he's in a relationship. And that's kind of bad on its own. But then his current girlfriend answers the ad not knowing it's him. And knowing my wife, if that scenario played out, she would be mad at me for putting an ad out like that, ignoring the fact she answered some dude's ad. All right, let's see what else happened on July 10th. 1832, U.S. President Andrew Jackson vetoes a bill that would recharter the Second Bank of the United States. 1925, the Scopes Trial. In Dayton, Tennessee, the so-called Monkey Trial begins where John T. Scope, a young high school science teacher, is accused of teaching evolution in violation of the Butler Act. 1962, the Telstar, the world's first communication satellite, is launched into orbit. 1966, the Chicago Freedom Movement, co-founded by Martin Luther King Jr., holds a rally at Soldier Field in Chicago as many as 60,000 people attend. 1991, Boris Yeltsin takes office as the first elected president of Russia. Some people claim he's the only president that was actually elected. Now, there's been actually four presidential cabinets, let's say. Boris Yeltsin from 1991 to 1999. Vladimir Putin from 2000 to 2008. Dmitry Medvedev was from 2008 to 2012. And then, of course, we got Vladimir Putin again in 2012. 1992 in Miami, former Panamanian leader Manuel Noriega is sentenced to 40 years in prison for drug and racketeering violations. When we invaded Panama and basically captured him, he had plans of attacking the United States. Yeah, he had drawn out plans. The country had like four airplanes. The guy was delusional. <laughs> Following his capture, Noriega was transferred to a cell in the Miami Federal Courthouse, where he was arraigned on 10 charges, which the Miami Grand Jury had returned two years earlier. The trial was delayed until September of 1991, because since we invaded, some people thought he should be treated as a prisoner of war, and not just like a common drug kingpin. That's how they were treating him at the time. Anyway, the trial eventually went on, and it ended in April of 1992, when Noriega was convicted on eight of the 10 charges charges of drug trafficking, racketeering, and money laundering. Basically, he was giving a safe haven for all the Colombian drug lords and help them get their product to the United States and elsewhere. On July 10th, 1992, Noriega was sentenced to 40 years in prison. In pre-trial proceedings, the government stated that Noriega had received $322,000 from the U.S. Army and the CIA. Noriega insisted that he had, in fact, been paid close to $10 million. He said that he should be allowed to testify about the work he had done for the U.S. government. Basically, he was kind of playing a game where he's going to threaten to blow the whistle on all the things the CIA was doing. The judge held that the information about the operations in which Noriega had played a part in, supposedly, in return for payment, that was not relevant to his defense. The information about Noriega's connection to the CIA, which also included contacts with President Bush, were kept out of the trial. After the trial, Noriega appealed the ruling by the judge of the 11th Circuit Court. The court eventually ruled in the government's favor, saying that the potential to change the outcome of the trial was relatively marginal. Basically, the squeeze wasn't worth the juice. Eventually, he was considered a prisoner of war under Article 85 of the Geneva Convention. What happened was he got that status, and that meant he got his own cell that had that was furnished with electronics and exercise equipment. His cell at the prison was nicknamed the presidential suite. Noriega's prison sentence was eventually brought down to 30 years, but he did 17 years and was out for good behavior. His sentence ended on September 9th, 2007. He returned home to Panama and died on May 29th, 2017. 2019, the last Volkswagen Beetle rolls off the line in Puebla, Mexico. This was the last of almost 6,000 special edition Beetles. This one was sent directly to a museum. 
Movies released on July 10th, 2020, Greyhound. This is a war drama about U.S. Navy Commander Ernest Krauss. He is assigned to lead a convoy of Allied ships across the Atlantic during World War II. Along the way, his convoy is relentlessly pursued by German U-boats. The film was directed by Aaron Schneider. Now, this was a great movie. First of all, it was kind of strange because this came out at the very beginning of the pandemic. It was supposed to make it into the theaters, but instead, Apple and their new streaming service basically paid to have it put up on their service during the pandemic. So it never went to the theaters, and it was an excellent movie. The movie is based on a 1955 novel called The Good Shepherd by C.S. Forrester. If you ever get a chance, watch that. It's on Apple TV. Born on July 10th, 1972, Sofia Vergara. She became known for her role as Gloria on Modern Family after hosting several Univision shows. Her film credits include Hot Pursuit, The Smurfs, Machete Kills, and Fading Gigolo. She's from Colombia and she actually was going to school to be a dentist for three years. Then she ended up doing modeling and came to America. Everyone in Modern Family played such great parts. Hers was exceptional. Died on July 10th, 1989, Mel Blanc. Voice actor who brought to life the lovable characters like Bugs Bunny, Porky Pig, Tweety Bird, and Daffy Duck. His real name was Melvin Jerome Blank, but he changed the spelling of his last name after a rude comment made by his high school teacher. It used to be spelled B-L-A-N-K, and he changed it to B-L-A-N-C. Having voiced so many characters, his nickname was the Man of a Thousand Voices. Mel Blanc was a chain smoker since he was nine years old. Yeah, he continued his pack-a-day habit until he was 77 after he was diagnosed with COPD. On May 19th, 1989, his family checked him into Cedar Sinai Hospital in Los Angeles when they noticed that he had a bad cough while shooting a commercial. He was originally expected to recover, but when his health worsened, doctors discovered that he had advanced coronary artery disease. Also, he fell out of bed and broke his femur. After nearly two months in the hospital, Blank died at 2.30 p.m. on July 10th, 1989 at Cedar sinai Hospital. He was 81 years old. His headstone at Hollywood Forever Cemetery reads, That's all, folks. Mel Blank, man of a thousand voices, beloved husband and father, 1908 to 1989. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, be nice to each other.